Okay. I think we might have finally cracked the code and figured this out. Allegedly, we are live on Facebook, and I hope we are. And I have a plea for Facebook right now. Look deep into my eyes. Actually, get really close to the screen and listen to me clo closely and carefully. And look me in the eye when I say this. Facebook, I am begging you. I am pleading you. Mark Zuckerberg, I am begging from the bottom of my heart to please bring back the live feature where I can be live and someone else can be live in different states, different countries, different counties where we don't have to go through all this rigmarole of Zoom. Because believe you me, we just spent 30 minutes trying to figure it out and I am no mathematician and it was hard all the way. So I beg you, please bring back the feature where we can do dual lives from other states and other countries. That was like a, sta a dagger to my chest when that, was that, when that was taken away from me a couple months ago. Anyway, back to business. This is K-Rail. I am live in my apartment in Park City, Utah. I am not living in fear. I am living in abundance right now. And I am thrilled about my guest. Well, it's not even really a show. I'm just going to call it Highly Explosive Wellness. On the Highly Explosive Wellness show today, my great friend, none other than the gut babe herself, Mariana Daria, all the way from Peru. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes. So I would like to talk about a couple things today. But first of all, you know, I usually do a movement break when I start one of these. So Mariana, would you like to take the floor and do a movement break for everybody and have them engage? No. 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 <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I recently started this workout at home uh -huh. and it takes me like two days to fully recover. Like the first day after I do the workout, it's fine. But the uh -huh. second day after the workout, it's like, okay, I am sore. Today, I am sore. <laughs> you were sore last week when we were, when we were packing jaffles. I know. A week ago. I know. You know I'm what? Worried. Do you know what? Do you know what, that's, you know what that phenomenon is called, that soreness you're talking about? And it's ironic that it's two days because it takes 48 hours for it to kick in and fully blossom. Do you know what it is? Lactic acid? No. Lactic acid is the burn you feel when you're doing instead of 10 to 12 reps of, of heavy weights or for bicep curls or whatever, and your, your biceps start to burn, that mm -hmm. short-term burn is lactic acid, and then it gets flushed out of your system, which I'm glad you mentioned that because that's a good segue to what we can talk about in a second. What the pain is that you're experiencing is called delayed onset muscle soreness, also known as DOMS, D-O-M-S. Have you ever heard of that? Nope. Now, the body is a very tricky and funny organism, and it likes to play tricks on you sometimes. So instead of you feeling excruciating pain the minutes after the workout and the first 24 hours, it decides to wait until 48 hours have passed until it barrages you with a slam dunk of pain. So yeah. what is happening is the microfilaments in your muscle cells are getting broken down. They're literally getting destroyed, broken. And then what they do is they end up healing back together. So your destroyed muscle cells are what causes all that pain to occur. And it takes approximately 48 hours for it to go into full bloom. Last week I was yeah. sore for five days after I ran. I did a run outside last Sunday. For the first time since like September, I was so freaking sore. My traps were sore. I could have used a nice cupping session from our friend Katrina, but she was closed because, well, you know, the obvious situation is going on. But the lactic acid you mentioned brings me into a good topic, which is alkalinity. And you, being the gut babe, know all about alkalinity. So why don't you take the floor and tell the audience out there just a little bit more about alkalinity and its importance in the body and how to get alkaline? Well... It's okay. That's kind of like it's everything that has to be with nutrition and the body is always fascinating. The thing with alkalinity, um, illnesses don't exist in an alkaline body. But also the interesting thing is that digestion knows how to regulate its acidity. So I always talk about balance and moderation and ye, it's not good to have a way too alkaline body because then it's too much air, it's too alkaline that you're not grounded. But then it's not good to have an acidic body because then you can be, you, it could be easy for you to get sick because of all the acidity. So always find the, the middle balance. point the, in balance. between the balance. Yeah. And like speaking about alkalinity, the first thing that comes to my mind is those alkaline waters, those Kangen waters or 9.8 pH level. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. Oh, oh, oh do, I hear a oh. do I hear a debunk coming? Because I'm about to hear one, I think. <laughs> so unless you have a chronic illness, unless cancer is really 
is really an issue right now, yes, drink that alkaline water because you need your body to be alkaline ASAP. But if you're a normal person who just wants to get healthier or you're already healthy and you just want to maintain, you don't need to drink alkaline water because your digestive system knows exactly what to do and knows exactly the pH level where you should be at. So it's just expensive water. It's expensive pee, in other words. <laughs> <It's> just, yeah, <laughs> totally. And what you're describing is called homeostasis. Your body will naturally go into homeostasis. And you know how I do it? This masterful thing called time-restricted eating and fasting. Speaking yes. of which, speaking yes. of which, I know you've been doing a little bit of time-restricted eating lately, which I'm very proud of you for. We, meaning I don't have any frogs in my pocket, Me, we being the universe, are going to be doing a 48-hour fast this week in commemoration of Holy Week because I was okay. brought up Catholic. And I'm no longer Catholic. I'm, I'm a Christian, but I'm not Catholic. Anyway, no offense to any of you out there if you are Catholic because I know a lot of you are. You know all about it. Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, the whole shebang, Palm Sunday, the yesterday. So I thought how apropos would it be to do a 48-hour fast this week? So you are cordially invited to oh join me <laughs> on Wednesdays. And anyone out there listening at home, you are all cordially invited to join me as well. We are going to be doing a two-day fast starting on Wednesday. And my good friend, Melissa Lopez Larson, she's a very awesome psychiatrist, I might add. She's going to be joining forces with me as well. She's going to be posting it on her page and we're trying to get as many people on board as we can. So if you want to do a little fun challenge with us right before Easter, you got a two day fast coming up. Okay. I just want, I just want to give it a little disclaimer here. Okay. Fasting doesn't work for everyone. Some people really do have issues with the, with their blood sugars or issues with ghrelin that they just haven't, they haven't reached that point yet. So just, don't like start with intermittent fasting that 12 hours, 16 hour baby steps, and then go do a full fast. So okay. just dis disclaimer. <laughs> That's how, that is always how I start people off. And there's actually a difference between time restricted eating and intermittent fasting, FYI. So what you're suggesting is instead of jumping into a 48 hour fast, start out with 12 hours first and get your feet wet, which is exactly the way I roll too. But a lot of people watching, have already been doing a lot of fasting because they just kind of follow around what I do and say. So those of you that already had your feet wet and you've been doing 16 hours regularly, you've done a 24 hour on, on a regular basis, two or three times a week, then bang, go for the 48. And yeah. now for the rest of you, if you do want to just jump into a 48 hour fast, you're not, I, I highly suggest you're not going to make it. You might get to 16 hours and you're going to become ravenous and you might chew your arm off at the elbow because it, you're going to get, and, and your hunger might start to disappear. But what's going to end up happening is you're going to get nervous. And you don't want to get nervous and you don't want to get stressed when you're fasting because that defeats the purpose and it spikes your cortisol levels. Cortisol is a stress hormone. It causes your body to hold on to fat just like a spiked insulin level would do. So you want to keep your cortisol levels low. And if you start stressing out, you're going to defeat the purpose of fasting. However, you mentioned a word that I need you to, I need you to talk about a little bit more because not everybody out there watching and listening right now are science geeks like us. You said the word ghrelin. So I want you to talk about ghrelin and tell everybody what that is. And I want you to couple it up with leptin too. So ghrelin is a hunger hormone. If your ghrelin is all over the place, you're going to be hungry all the time. So oftentimes I hear, and this again, depends on your metabolism, depends on your activity intake. But sometimes I hear from clients, I'm hungry all the time. Okay, this could be, this could have a variety of reasons. One could be you're probably nutritional deficient, which means yet you're eating, you're not having enough nutrients in your diet. The other one could be that your ghrelin, which is a hormone that regulates your own hunger, is all over the place. So that's why you eat and then your hormones are like, okay, no, 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 you need to eat again two hours later. And then two hours later, you need to snack again and you're constantly snacking and you're not giving your digestive system space and time to process and absorb all those nutrients but then you are interrupting it with another meal or snack or fruit or smoothie, even if it's like a healthy snack. I don't care because if you're <laughs> eating- <laughs> Wow, they can stop, I don't care. <laughs> right? If you're constantly eating all the time, you are not digesting your foods well, and that's when the GI issues could come. Well, it could be constipation, it could be cramp, bloating, lack of sleep. There are just so many things. Like everything in, is related to the gut. Like that's why I am so fascinated about my topic. Gut health. Just 
Okay. And if you're, if you're really working out, you're a marathoner or you're a professional, professional trainer or something, you're really, really working out a lot. Yeah. Maybe that could be adapted because there's bio-individuality. Your healthy food could be my poison. Your way of eating could be my poison as well. Mm -hmm. So you just like listen to your body. But if that's not your case, if you're not working out six hours a day, which in this town, I know people that work out six hours a day, like skiing and gym and all of those things. Uh, then you probably Guilty. should not be eating all day, right? <laughs> I, I don't work out six hours a day, guys. I probably should be a little bit more into my fitness, working on it, baby steps. <laughs> Always baby steps. Um, so you brought up a good point, and um, that's why I love chatting with you because I'm huge huge proponent of gut health. And I feel every single thing starts in the gut and everything can be treated, prevented, and you can have a happy, healthy, optimal lifestyle if you focus Absolutely. on your gut health inside Absolutely. and out. It's like the core on the outside and the, the core, the literal, literal core on the inside as well. So let's talk about how can we boost our gut health? And what do you think about this idea? I think we spoke about this already. If I didn't speak to you, I spoke to someone else about it the other day. Does it make sense that if you work on your gut health and you create like an army of like beautiful, great, gracious bacteria in your stomach, good bacteria that really will digest food well, maybe just maybe that can help prevent certain conditions that are floating around in the space right now? I don't know. <laughs> There's some kind of virus I think going on. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so, yeah, it's really important. The thing, with, well, yeah, the novel virus, we just, there's not enough information there. We, we just right. don't know what's going to happen. We, we there, there's simply don't, we don't know the results from like two months, six months of having this virus or not. But right. uh, what I can talk from my scoop of practice is epigenetics and your health starts in your gut yeah. because there is genetic information in your gut. There is, uh, there's as many neurotransmitters in your gut than in your brain. And then we've already spoken about the correlation in between. Gut brain uh, access. Brain, yeah. And our gut. They're, uh, perfect communication. Interchangeable, yep. But there is also something very important called epigenetics, mm -hmm. which is the capacity and the ability. And this is just so fascinating when I read, mm -hmm. read this book. It was like, God, we get to choose it is a choice so don't blame your genetics stop blaming your mother you mother. get to choose if you want to be healthy or not because and again i'm not asking you to go all the way into organic vegan gluten-free blah 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 free in one second but you can start slowly it's a matter of choice whether I want to feel good and think good and do good and by consequence, look good. Mm -hmm. Or I am going to make the choice of not eating good so that I'm going to do unwell. I'm going to feel sick. I'm going to feel bloated. I'm not going to think with clarity. And by default, I'm not going to look good. So in our society, unfortunately, it's kind of like this cold of the body that, oh my gosh, I want to look so good. I want to look sexy. I want to look with this six pack. That to me, it's kind of like the consequence of, it's kind of like a scale, right? Yeah. Like, okay, first I want to think good and I want to feel good and I want to like everything, but the physique, the physique. Yeah. Cool. It's going to happen, <laughs> but it's, I just, it's just so scary to see, especially in social media nowadays with younger girls, this obsession of their body. Well, okay, that's not healthy. So yeah. again, balance. We're, going, we're coming back into balance. A lot of which is completely fake and I can't stand fake. I like real, I like authentic. I don't like being deceived. I don't being, like being lied. I don't like when con artists step into my life and bamboozle me into believing certain things that aren't true. And I like with people that are like, when people are doing videos and stuff, I want to see every wrinkle, every pimple, every mole on your body. And if I see anything but that and it looks too shiny, then it's, then you're fake and you're fraud and you're done. I'm like, I'm I have out. no makeup right now. Only a little bit of mascara in my eyelashes, but me too. Nothing. I got a little mascara too. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's the punk, punk, punk rocker in me coming out. When I used to go on stage, I put the mascara on right before I go on stage. I'm like, ah. <laughs> 
So oh I need to ask you a question now also about, um, <laughs> so I always put blessings into my food before I eat them. So you can actually charge your food, in my opinion, with positive chi. So food has a vibrational signal to it. And obviously a Pop-Tart or, or a nachos cheese platter or a chili dog with cheese on it from, from the local burrito shop down the street is gonna have a very, very low vibrational signal to it. Whereas something like a big old bowl of those delicious sprouted beans you made a couple weeks ago on top of a salad with kale and organic baby spinach and stuff, that's gonna have a high vibration to it. Now, if your thought pattern is strong enough, I feel you can have a junk meal every now and then, and it won't even, have a, it won't even affect you or phase you if your brain function is strong enough and you bless that food before you eat it. What are your thoughts on that? Okay, let me go one step farther. You and I go to the, the burrito joint down the road. I find this wonderful salad on there, vegan, beans, the whole nine yards, and I get that wonderful salad. You get a beef and bean burrito, and you get guacamole and tor tortilla chips. And we both sit down. You're over there just munching away saying, oh, this tastes so good, and you're in ecstasy, and you're happy, and you're in love with your food. And I'm over there like chomping on my salad like a rabbit, and I'm all angry and frustrated. Who is going to get the better benefits from the food they're eating? You. Yeah. Expand. So, okay, you got to start asking questions one at a time because you previously asked, asked something different about, well, I forgot. Okay. I know, so I to, we, we were talking about sorry. vibration. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm a, I'm a yogi and I started learning about vibration when I immersed into Kundalini yoga and I'm not a Kundalini yoga. I, I don't work with, um, like energy hands and all those like bamboo sticks. No, no, no. I, <laughs> I don't do that, but I believe in vibrations. So the thing that with vibration, I was actually talking with a friend about this nature has a vibration. If we actually go and measure tree or a flower or the earth it has a certain vibration same as our foods the thing with foods it's it's pretty interesting what you were saying about putting words to your food because it's the water that it takes that vibration so you can look up you guys can look up the um there's several studies about the vibration in the water so if you put good energy let's say i'm talking to my teapot like, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. I love you. You're the best. This water is going to absorb those vibrations. I love it. Whether if I do the opposite, oh my gosh, blah, 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 and start saying mean words to my water, it's going to absorb that, that vibration. So then what, that's what's going to happen. If I put love words to my water, I'm going to end up drinking tea full of love exactly the same with food food has water vegetables uh salads they have a small percentage of water so if we put energy and words to our food it's going to absorb that and it's going to taste better i actually did a meditation exercise with a group of people last year in salt lake city where we grabbed one almond and we did like a appreciation meditation just put our love and our good intentions to that one almond everybody in the room told me that almond tastes so much better where is it from costco <laughs> you put positive chi into it that's what you yeah. did exactly you raise the vibration of your foods that's why always all the time homemade food tastes so much better because you put Absolutely. the intention yes. and the love and it's the energy of your hands mm -hmm. i don't like to eat out like if you know me i eat out sometimes like not because it's my You're choice right. we've never eaten out ever nope i don't think i've ever eaten out with you yeah unless it's kind of like a made once in a while if i have to but i will much rather make my own foods. I make everything, like my dressing, my salads, my protein, like everything I make it. Sauerkraut, kimchi. I kimchi make it all. <laughs> I make my sauerkraut. <laughs> I know, I've had it, it's delicious. And that's, that mm -hmm. kale salad you made the other, the other day was amazing as well. That, that's my rock star kale salad, yeah. Oh, that's, a, that's a good title for it, rock star kale salad. <laughs> that works perfectly. Um, so I, I am totally on board with this whole theology that you're talking about. There's actually a book written about it. There's also a book written about the ice crystals. Have you read that one? I can't remember the guy's name, but he did actual experiments where he wrote 
positive affirmations on bottles, positive words, and then negative words. And then he, he put a slight bit of water inside the bottle, froze it, and took some of the crystals off and put them under a microscope. The crystals that had the positive affirmations and the positive words like love, happiness, joy, mm -hmm. um, philanthropy, and all this stuff, they had amazing, beautiful crystals that were extracted. And the ones that had like hate, hurt, negative, blah, 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 and all these bad words, they were all misshapen and malformed. So 100% valuable information right there, in my opinion. And I always suggest people write something positive on your water bottles and stuff like that. Just like write positive words all over the place on it because then you're constantly drinking it. And don't just do that, but look at the words and think about them before you drink it. So like you're, you're energizing the water with it. And I, when I make kombucha, I literally, I hug my vessels. I stare at them sometimes like they're, like they're kids or like they're puppies. And then all of the blends I have are all named positive things. I won't have it. I won't have a blend with like anything negative with it. Okay. Right. And speaking about that, you, yeah, it's, and I'm fascinated with nutrition and food and vibrations and all of that, but also lifestyle. And the same way as you can put positive words to your food and your water, you can put it to yourself. You can write, really? <laughs> you can write affirmations to yourself and put it in a mirror and read them every day. Like I have, I have affirmations in my bathroom and in my bedroom mirror every day. Like I am beautiful. I am successful. I am entrepreneur. I am blah, blah, blah. I am love. And all the things that I want to attract because your brain does not know the difference in between fantasy or reality. If you see it like vision boards or affirmations. I got one right there. Vision board. Right. I look at it every or, day. Read it every day. And that's also what's kind of like shocking me nowadays with all this news. Okay, guys. So the only time when I have turned on my TV in the last six years has been once. Six years? Six, six years. <laughs> I thought you were going to say last six days. The only time no. I someone texted me and said, <laughs> Trump is talking. You better turn it on. Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. Six, better, probably better than six years. Wow. Once the TV, like the actual like television with the news and stuff, once for the Winter Olympics, I think was a couple of years ago. Yeah. And the second one for the, but on, the Winter Olympics only for the dance part where they were dancing and performing. Cause I didn't yeah. really watch the Olympics too much. And then the second one was for the uh, Shakira's Super Bowl in JLo. Good call on that one. I thought it was Two. <laughs> Why? Why do I make this choice of not plugging into the news, news. or the bad news? I call it the bad news. The, the bad news. Uh, because <laughs> your brain does not know the difference in between fantasy and reality. If you are watching that, you're watching people getting sick, you're watching sad movies, you're watching horror movies, your brain is gonna be what the heck is happening? I'm going to start producing loads of cortisol because I, 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 am, I may be living in a haunted house or I may be being haunted attacked world. by a novel virus that is going to kill everyone. So your body starts creating that defensive system of, we got this. And then what's going to happen? You're going to get sick. Because you're watching it, you're over you're buying into the fear, mm -hmm. buying into that, and over consuming that quality of information. I am choosing not to consume. I mean, there is just basic stuff that I need to consume, like you know, like yes, basic. Just I need to know a little bit, but not so much, because I much rather plug into the positivity content and be happy instead of plug into the news and be unhappy. I want to be happy. I don't know about you guys. I can speak for you on that. I've, ever since this thing started, I, I said, where's the opportunity at? I'm like, well, the opportunity is here. Thank I you. see people in groceries when it first started, the grocery stores were packed. All the toilet paper was gone. Paper towels <laughs> gone. Tissues gone. And I'm like, wait, is this, a, is this like a, a, a 24 hour vi stomach virus with, with vomiting <laughs> and diarrhea? That's going to happen for six months, two weeks in a row? Because oh that's literally what I thought it was because I don't watch the news either. When, when they start talking about the fire, I'm like, oh, it's some kind of bad stomach dis disorder because everyone's taking all the toilet paper. Come to find out it's a bronchial condition with the chest and the lungs. And I'm like, <laughs> and what's with the toilet paper? I still I, I still haven't figured paper. out that mystery. None of us are going to figure that mystery out ever, I don't think. And I don't mean to make jokes about the, the pandemic that's going on, but the reality is I don't, I don't get the toilet paper. But – is there still non-toilet paper right now? Still, the still. The shelves are empty. Empty. It's shocking. It's just but like, and, and this, I mean, I don't, 
I, I told, I'm totally uninhibited with the poop talks and stuff like that because well, that's my thing. I would expect nothing less. Right. Back to but you, jam. <laughs> I have had suffered with viral infectious diarrhea in India. I, mean, I had funny, yeah. four weeks of mm-hmm. diarrhea. I remember at some point of my illness, I was like, all I wish for Christmas is just a regular poop. That's all I want. <laughs> I just want to poop like a normal person. Because it was like extremely water. I was, guys, I was so sick. But I took the opportunity. I had to be so sick. It had to hurt me so much for me to understand it. And now if I see clients that are having those issues, like, okay, I hear you. I have been there 10 times more. So this is what I did. This is what worked for me. Blah, blah, blah. So take the pain into the possibility and the opportunity. Yes. Voila. Yes. And exactly. That's exactly how I looked at it. I'm like, well, everyone, everyone's in panic. Everyone's in fear and they're living in fear and they're, they're glued to their TVs. They're stuck at home. They're talking about their diets have been thrown to the wolves. They're gaining weight. They're getting out of shape. And I'm like, well, I don't want any of that. I'm going the opposite direction. What can I do to contribute positive chi to people? And I'm focusing 100% on that. I already know what the problems are. We both know. We know what the problems are. Why dwell on the problems? Let's think about the positive. And Let's not talk about the problems. Let's talk about the solutions. Exactly. That's <laughs> what I've been saying. The solution. Let's work on the solution. But I have to rewind for a minute before I get off this topic. When you were talking about the affirmations, everybody listen up. Very Again, get really close to the screen. Put your ear close to the screen to hear me well. And look me right in the eye when I'm talking. <laughs> Always act like you were in possession of that which you want. Notice Mariana said, I am beautiful. I am successful. I am making a lot of money. I am supporting many people. I am changing a lot of people's lives. I am living free of ego. It's I am, not I want, not I hope. You are. You are beautiful the way you are. You are the master. You are making changes. And always speak in the present moment like you're already in possession of that which you want. And that will fire up the electrical particles around us and pull a lot more energy in that you need. Boom. And you, you can also journal from five years from now. So let's say I have in my journal today, June 24th, 2024, I am blah, blah, blah. I am here. I am making this much money. I am impacting this many lives. Beautiful. Because your brain doesn't know, know the, the difference. difference. Yes. If you write it and if you see it and if you read it, it's going to happen. And sometimes it's really freaky. Like I remember a year ago, I put in my vision board, this crazy places in Thailand. And I want to do yoga in India. And I want to go to this places. And I, and I want to ride the death road in Bolivia. I did it. Wow. Well, I always wanted to live in the Rocky Mountains when I was a little kid. And then when, when I realized that it was probably not going to happen, I forgot about it. I surrendered. And then before I knew it, several years later, here I am living in the mountains. And then I realized, <laughs> wow, I manifested that at a young age. Speaking of which, that's my next topic is manifestation. Because that's exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Manifesting is attaching yourself to a concept or a thought, acting like you're in possession of it, and then surrendering and not trying to force your way into it, but allowing it to happen. We need to allow things too. We have to allow success to happen. If we overthink things, we allow too many blockages to get in the way because we get frustrated, we get angry, and we get disgusted. And then nothing's going to happen, except you're just going to keep like two North Poles of a magnet hitting each other over and over again. So you there, it. Yeah, there are certain times in life when um, it's a little hard to think spirituality. And for example, just to, just give a brief example. Um, I had a friend of a friend that shared this story that she was about to lose her house, her mortgage, blah, blah, blah. Things were falling apart. And she contacted her good friend who was a yogi and spiritual guru and told her, hey, friend, this is what's happening right now. And her spiritual friend said, you just, you just got to let, let go, just flow, just meditate. Okay, that's not a good place to be spiritual, <laughs> you know? And that's kind of like where we are right now in the world. Okay, yes, there, there's some things that we can take with positivity and spirituality and attraction and let's just put in, putting our best effort and our best affirmations to what's happening right now. But there's also the other reality to take action. Okay, what can I do right now? Can the things that I can control f- for this result, because, because everything we do has a result. 
if we inertia eat healthy, mm -hmm. the result is that we're going to feel healthy. If we over consume fear, the result is that we are probably going to be freaked out and by consequence, raise our cortisol levels, our immunity is going to go low and we're going to get sick. Mm -hmm. So this, like, I just cannot say this more yeah. now than any time. You need to be healthy now, today, start today. It's not an option. It's a must. Absolutely. Now is, now is the time to really look deep inside yourself and figure out where you are with your health, with your life, with your goals, with your ambitions, and that what you want to create in this world. How do you want to go down years from now when you finally pass away? Do you want to leave a legacy or not? Do you want to be in good health? Do you want to be in good shape? There's no time like the present to get all that stuff in motion, into serious motion. And when this is all over and said and done, Mariana, I am convinced that there's going to be this huge new wave of people trying to get on the health bandwagon because they're, they're not going to want to deal with this again. They're going to want to boost their immunity. They want to boost their gut health, their brain function, all these other things in case something like this should happen again. So I think the, the fear-stricken state isn't, hasn't even started yet. I think when this is over, the fear is going to just keep escalating for at least a year. And I, I don't mean to sound down or negative. I'm just, I'm just stating facts here. I, I think, well, I cannot be more grateful where I am right now uh -huh. because of where the, where, where the place I am right now. I'm in Utah. I'm originally from Peru and things are not well down there. So I mean, yeah. that's also, I, I was actually chatting with a friend of mine that I, I, could feel selfish right now because like I'm living such a life of abundance. I'm living in a safe space. I don't have a military in the door of my house waiting for True. people to just like get into their house, you know, like, but instead of thinking that way of, Oh my gosh, we are in a safe place. I shifted. I attracted this. And what can I do and how much can I give? right now i we are being put we creators fitness nutritionists we are being put right now in this space the this is line. our time to give and to help to inspire other people because this is when people need it the most absolutely i couldn't agree more we're we, we've all of, a, all of a sudden we've been shoved to the front line and i accept that role with open arms we're from a non-egoic way because i've always been about the solution but now the solution became almost all of a sudden super relevant, super timely, and super important. 10 times more important and relevant than it was a month or even a month ago. But now it's like the stuff is getting real. When you go to Whole Foods and they now have police tape set up and yellow spots you have to stand on six feet away from everyone, that is some serious business. And, and they have the, like these, they're almost, the, the workers are almost completely concealed in a glass case themselves now. There's like these huge glass. I don't know what you would call windows, I guess you would call them, put up at the cash registers and they're wearing gloves and stuff like that. So it is like the game has been changed and I, ha I have reason to believe the game has been changed for good. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen after this. I really can't tell. I just I think know. that, you know, <laughs> after all the things that have been happening with like, you know, the Korea thing and the third world war and then things happen and then now the pandemic, I'm like, in the, my my soul right now is like, okay, what's next? I'm ready. I got this. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. Come on, pandemia. I'm ready. <laughs> you know, because after it's been like, boom, after, after like, how do, you, how do you say impact and like so many things happening that I'm pretty much in this like defensive mode right now. Like whatever happens, I'm ready. <laughs> Well, I've kind of been that way too, by, by default, not on purpose. But by default. Struggling and then like out of struggle and then into struggle, feast, famine, feast, famine, minimalist, the whole nine yards. I've been down a lot of roads, but um, this one, I'm just like, I'm plowing right into it right now. And, and I'm trying to do, like I said, as much good as I possibly can. And I know you're doing the same thing and that's all we really can do. We, we invite you all to do the same thing. That's what you should always be doing. This is just like a wake up call to me for everybody else to realize what has been missing and what's been lacking. And not to mention, I see a lot of benefits that are occurring from this right now. And I don't hear a lot of people talking about them. So one of the things I've noticed is, I don't know if you noticed this, but gas prices have dropped seven to nine cents on average per gallon across the nation. <laughs> I and haven't filled my car in a while. <laughs> I, haven't had to, I haven't had to fill my car in about a, a month, three weeks at least. 
That's a good thing. So we're, we're reducing fossil fuels. The ga gas prices are going down. They could probably stay down for a while. There's cities like LA and Chicago and, and a couple of, even Salt Lake City where the sky is actually clear and you can see blue sky now. Hello. Mm -hmm. Those are all really, really good things. And here's another thing I've noticed. I, I haven't heard a person say about it. Okay, so we're all quarantined. We're not having communication with people. We're not going to gyms. We're not doing all these things. So when you're out in public and you're at bars, you're at restaurants, you're at grocery stores, you're mingling with a lot of people, you're at gyms, picking up equipment where people before you were filthy and didn't clean up after themselves. You're gathering germs, you're picking them up, you're getting sick, you're getting colds, you're getting flu, stomach bugs, the list goes on and on. Okay, now, as a unit, as an American tribe, we have been quarantined now for almost a month where we're not going to the gyms, we're not going to the restaurants, we're not going to the bars, and all these places that are open have super strict cleaning principles and they're constantly spraying things down cleaning them all day. So, mm -hmm. what about this thought? It just struck me today. The colds and the germs and the things that we routinely get this time of year, sans allergies, we're gonna get the allergies because of the pollen, but all the rest of the rudimentary things, the colds and the viruses that, that thrive from germs being spread around, all those germs, are they completely dying off and disappearing? And are all the colds and stuff disappearing? And I talked to my client about this this morning. She was in agreement that she believes that like all those germs and all the things that we normally get are gonna disappear. And I think she said she heard uh, there was an interview somewhere about doctors or something uh, for, with a doctor. And he was saying how none of these other cases are occurring. Now I know they're saying, unless you're like dying, don't come to the doctor right now because to focus on the COVID. However, does it make sense that all the rest of these subsidiary smaller conditions and disease and like cold germs and stuff could possibly disappear? And if it does, is that not going to make us as a nation more healthy than before the COVID virus came? What is your thought on that? I'm dying to know to talk to someone about this. Okay. Actually, I actually have kind of like an opposite thought about it because yes, you're right. I, I didn't really think it that way. I, I thought it more of the um, hand sanitizer thing. Like I see everyone now with those hand sanitizer yeah. thingies. And that is one of the gut babes protocols. Stop using the hand <laughs> sanitizers. But this, this was before the virus guys. Don't get me wrong. Um, why? Because once whatever you put on your skin, whether if it's lotion, hand sanitizer, alcohol, or even makeup, it takes seven minutes to get it to your liver because your skin is your largest organ. Right. So if you're putting that antibacterial stuff in your hand, that guess where, where is that going to end? And that's going to be absorbed by your skin and it's going to end up in your blood system. Okay. So my concern is that everybody is wiping out their good bacteria with this nasty hand sanitizers. I'm not a doTERRA person. I don't do any doTERRA thing, but they do have a, an on guard spray thingy yeah, that it. doesn't have any anti, um, any artificial harmful yeah. artificial. Yeah. It's actually natural. I have one left. That's it. And they're, I think they're like over, <laughs> they're not selling more. I don't know what's happening with doTERRA, <laughs> but if you know, I'm sure, you know, you guys know anybody from doTERRA that can supply you with those um, oh, natural hand sanitizers that, or if you have been to the hospital or if you know that you've been exposed to a potential, uh, ill person with a virus. Okay. Use it once in a while, but not all day long. I see yeah. children doing this. Like, I'm just going to clean my hands. Okay. So we're creating this habit of over sanitation. Immunity is created in your gut. And I was actually reading this book about gut immunity. It's actually called 10% Human, and it talks about germs and bacteria. And the interesting thing about immunity is that we create our immunity based on germs. So there's good bacteria and bad bacteria. And germs not necessarily can be harmful because germs are building up our immunity. My concern with this time of the year right now is that everybody is over sanitizing everything. Mm, so you're right. it's pretty much wiping out their good bacteria. So it's okay. You're going to be fine. Just make sure you take your, you're indulging with a nice prebiotic food, probiotics, food, whole foods. And on top, you can add a good also probiotic from a respectful laboratory or something. Um, but yeah. It's okay. Clean up. Use n not don't overuse hand sanitizers. But if you're using them, make sure you're bringing back that bacteria. Germs are not a scary thing. We actually need them 
because that's building up our immunity. And actually, that's one of the theories what I think I got so sick in India because here I am, beautiful Mariana, fixing every meal. I, I live in a bubble. Like I pretty much just control everything I take. Then I go to India and I have no immunity for the dirt. And I got so sick because I was too clean. But people in India don't get sick because they're too exposed to germs. <laughs> you know? So, and again, balance. Yes, clean. But if you're going to use sanitizers, don't overuse them. And prebiotics, probiotic foods, and take a supplement right well, now. Well, germs are... And dirt actually is kind of like a, a built-in vaccine for the body. It, it allows yes. your body to build antibodies. That's yes. why I've never been a big fan of the whole wash your hands a million times a day, use antibacterials. Yep. Do you yep. smell those things? They're, they smell like a combination of like fake watermelon and cucumbers mashed together <laughs> to a pulp with some kind of fragrance sprinkled across the top. And I'm just like, I, I smell it in the gym sometimes when people are over there squirting their hands and I'm like, oh. And it, like, it, it leaves your hands so dry and uncomfortable afterward. It's not even funny. So it's sapping moisture from your hands. It dries them out. It causes them to crack. And I just, I never really liked it. I understand, yes, we're, we're in a situation now where the, the situation is different. Every situation yeah. in life is safe or dangerous. That's called threat modulation. So if I walk into a restaurant when this thing is over and I sit down and some dude comes in with a shotgun and aims it at me, that's threat modulation. That's dangerous. What am I going to do to get out of harm's way? I'm going to jump under the table and do something. But mm -hmm. Every situation in life, you can walk across the street and it could seem safe and it can end up dangerous, but you have to be very sharp and you have to be quick on your feet to recognize the situation. And you also, I almost forgot to talk about this. You are the gut babe. So I was going to say, let's tell the people, this is going to be our closing thought. Well, actually I have something else that's going to be quick, but what can people do to improve their gut health? And you started going down that road. So talk a little more about what specific foods are good sources of prebiotics and probiotics and, um, I'm going to throw some two cents in there once you're finished, but go ahead. So I always like to start this topic with you are not what you eat. You are, you are what you absorb. Right. And your bacteria in your gut is pretty much what's going to eat up the nutrients and break them down and convert it into energy and good sources. But if you're not absorbing your foods, then you're wasting your money on food because, oh, <laughs> because it's going, it. you're not it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not processing it. Uh, so you asked about prebiotics uh, and probiotics. I am a big fan of whole foods. Uh, start with the actual vibrational food. Yes, I'll talk about supplements in a minute because supplements are important as well. But uh, I'll start with the whole foods. So prebiotic foods. And this also depends. I know some people are going to tell me, oh, Mariana, those foods make me sick. Okay, if those make you sick, then Look for something else because we are all different yeah. by your individuality. My healthy food could be your poison. Okay. So prebiotic foods, quick examples could be onions, garlic, leeks, artichoke, jer well, jerusalem artichokes, chicory root, uh, what am I forgetting? Bananas. Oatmeal, oat grain, oat bran. Yeah. And then again, some people cannot digest grains, so right. it will not work for them. Some people do great. I do great in oatmeal. Perfect. Okay. Um, asparagus. That's just to name a few, Google it, easy. Prebiotic foods, yes, you're gonna have yes, a huge yes. list from the actual foods. I actually love to throw leeks in pretty much each of my meals because I don't do great with onions. I tend up to break out a little bit when I eat too much onions and that's my body telling me, it's too much. You cannot eat onions every day. So once in a, maybe once a week I fix something with onions, but instead of onions, I put leeks which is great. They pair so good with almost every food. Mm -hmm. Garlic, same. Yeah. I eat garlic pretty much every, not every day, like four times a week because it's a great prebiotic food and it gives such a nice flavor. Okay, probiotic foods. Kombucha, miso, oh, yeah. Kombucha, miso, sauerkraut, um, kimchi, pickles, any fermented foods. But let me give you a trick. Uh, if you're going to buy it, just make sure it doesn't have any added vinegar because if it has vinegar, that's called marketing because <laughs> it's the company trying to speed up the process of the fermentation to sell it faster. And you know what? It's okay. We all want to make money. We all do, we all want to sell, but that, that food that has vinegar 
it's not bad for you. It just doesn't have the natural probiotics that, that then a natural fermented food would have, like my homemade sauerkraut. If you want to do the sauerkraut that I make, just go to my Instagram, uh, at GetFave, and there's the recipe. It's really easy, and it's so much cheaper. Like, guys, I save so much money by making my own probiotic foods because the thingy like this of sauerkraut and whole foods is like $7. Yeah. Okay, I make nine of those. Two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, right? Because I just buy the cabbage, make it myself, ferment it myself. Three weeks later, boom, my fridge is packed with sauerkraut right now. <laughs> Which I will happily steal some from you because I'm actually out of sauerkraut and it's on my list of things that I need. And uh, that's why I do kombucha on my own as well because I can make a gallon of kombucha for the price of one 16 ounce bottle. FYI. Yeah. Totally. You can make your own and you can ferment whatever you want. And it's so fun to get into your own fermenting foods because you're pretty much making your own probiotics with your hands. And you're also putting the nice words and nice energy and those yes. positive affirmations into your own food. Yep. It's going to taste so much better. It is. It's made with love and it's made with positive chi and that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. All right. I got one more thing I got to ask you and then we're going to wrap this up. Yeah. Favorite ice cream. Go. Hi. Bliss, bliss coconut, coconut bliss. Oh, coconut bliss. Good one. What flavor? I all. Oh. <laughs> wow. We just, hit the, we just hit a brick wall with that one now, didn't we? I, I'm a chocolate person. Yeah. I think chocolate would be my favorite. Okay. I like chocolate. I like chocolate peanut butter and I like cookies and cream. Those are two of my favorites. And yeah. I chocolate. Both, I found both of those in coconut variety as well. All right, let's wrap this up. We've been talking a long time. Thank you so much for chatting with me today. Tell yeah, everybody totally. where, they can, where they can find you and what you got coming up and stuff like that. Yeah, well, you can find me pretty constant on Instagram. Just find me at GadFaith. You can also go to my website and set an appointment with me, uh, GadFaith.com. Facebook, I am not so much on Facebook, but I read you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, TikTok, I recently started my TikTok and yeah, it's fun. It's fun to like create on videos and recipes there as well. So everything at Get Babe. All right, perfect. Your, your TikTok stuff is priceless. I got to get this after you a couple weeks ago over at the farm or whatever you call it. Whoa, almost dropped my computer. And uh, you're very good at that TikTok stuff. I still got to crack into that. That seems like more of a, I don't know what, more technologically and sound thing. And you know how I am with technology, evidenced by the fact that we struggle to get on Facebook. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for chatting with me today. We're going to do this again probably next week because it's just fun to talk to. And we got so much good information to give people. Why deprive people of things? We're about the solution. Yeah. And we encourage you all to be about the solution right now. Thank Dig you. deep. Don't live in fear. Don't watch the news. Just, just like go outside and like experience what's happening and just figure it out. Just figure it out on your own. Take off your shoes when the sun is shining. Walk across the grass barefoot. Collect some negative ions. Get your body in homeostasis. And if you have people that you live with, definitely get eight hugs a day for eight seconds. Definitely think in the present moment every single day. Do at least one good deed without any expectation of anything in return every single day. And do at least one thing beyond your comfort zone every single day. And lastly, pick up at least one piece of trash. It's not that hard. Do that all the time and get your affirmations going. Get up in the morning and do a positive affirmation every single day as well. Write it down like Marianne has said. Put it in front of your face where you can see it all the time and act like you're in possession of that what you want because you deserve it. Okay, I'm gonna shut this sucker down. We're out. Make sure to follow both of us. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to hit me up. Hit up the gut, babe, and have a wonderful day.